of quick testimonies. I wanted to just tell you this one a little bit. It's a teacher, and she teaches at a school where they have dropouts and teen pregnancies, and they have a lot of people that just don't usually make it in life. Well, one of her students, a 17-year-old girl whose father was a missionary, years passed, she met him, and she was in her class. And I'm just going to kind of tell it to you. And she asked her one day where she went to church. She had, the young girl asked the teacher where she went to church. And she said, oh, I drive to Sarasota, which is like, you know, an hour away for her. And she said, oh. And she said, you drive that far to go to church? And she said, yeah, my church is that good. And she said from time to time she'd ask her questions about God and church. And uh, she said one day after class she mentioned to her that her church had thousands of hours of downloads and messages available to her at no charge. Now this is a 17-year-old girl that usually a lot of these lives just continue to go in the wrong direction. Well, this 17-year-old girl told her, she told her that the, and that the services were broadcast live online on Friday and Sunday mornings. Well, not long after that she come running into the class and said, I just love your pastor. <laughs> so do I. Yeah. <laughs> Smart girl. Not long after that, um, she said, he's just so cool. Said he just makes so much sense to me. And she went on to tell about the messages she'd watched on the website. And from that point on, she'd occasionally walk into the class and tell her about something that she'd watched. And she said, I just hesitate to begin to tell her, hey, we have to start class now. And she said, uh, uh, sometimes she said, uh, the best comment she made was soon before she was going to graduate, she came bounding into the room and she said, uh, she called her name and she said, I went to church yesterday morning. And she said, I, as soon as I could, I ran home and then I watched the service online right after that. <laughs> and she said, uh, everything is going so well for her. She said, your pastor just explains the Bible and she called it religion so good to me in ways that help me to understand and put it to practice in my everyday life. He makes it so simple and shows me how I was really supposed to live. 17 years old. Isn't that just great? I really like that testimony. Bless me, because 17-year-olds can understand the word no matter what people say. They don't have to be rebellious and out of line. God loves them. And I had to read you this one. See if you catch it. This person got $2,000 and $2,000 and a pass of Silver Dollar City and a knife. I couldn't let it pass. And a bow target and two dozen arrows and a leather sectional couch and a refrigerator and gift cards. And they're thanking God for all of it. Let's stand up and thank God that they got a new pocket knife. Second Corinthians, the 10th chapter and the third verse. He said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Ephesians 6 that we'll see in a moment, he talks about that. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. People's not our problem. You ought to say that out loud. People, People. are not my problem. Not my problem. <laughs> now I know it may look like it sometimes, sound like it and feel like it, but really they're not. You could take the meanest, most ornery, obstinate, hard to get along with person, most selfish, twisted, perverted person. Get them saved. Get them filled with the Spirit. Get them walking, walking in love and walking by faith. Could be one of the best friends you ever had. The problem is them yielding to wrong influences. And it's the influences behind them that's your enemy. Not the man. Not the woman. How many think we need to remind ourselves of this Frequently. I want you to say it again. People are not my problem. Do you have an enemy though? Yeah, you do. You do. Though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. Keep reading. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not physical. They're not natural. But they're real. And they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, there's not even a period after the word strongholds. So don't let your mind wander in all kind of directions what a stronghold might mean. He tells you exactly what kind of strongholds he's talking about in the very next phrase. What kind of strongholds? He's talking about strongholds in your thinking. Casting down imaginations. 
imaginations, image, images. This would include fantasies of all kinds. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I don't care how uh, it may sound, uh, how people may want it to be true. If it's contrary to any part of the Word of God, what do you need to do? You need to slam it. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Had a fellow tell me one time years ago after preaching on this, he said, Brother Keith, I got it, I got it, I got it. Every mind needs a bouncer at the door. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's telling off on where he spent a lot of his time previously. <laughs> but it's the truth. It's the truth. You, when, when any kind of thought, any kind of suggestion, any kind of feeling, imagination, fantasy, whatever comes to you, you do not just need to let it in and relax and think about it and ponder it and dwell on it. You need to examine it. Amen. Are you in line with the Word? Are you in line with the will of God and what's right? And if not, don't let it in. Amen. If you had already let it in, kick it out. Amen. Right? Amen. Casting down yeah. imaginations. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing into captivity. Notice these next two words. Every thought. Is every, does every thought matter? Yes. Yes. This is the thing many have not believed. They thought, well, you know, long as you don't do it, then, you know, it doesn't matter. That's not true. That's not true. Amen. Where do these thoughts and feelings come from? Thoughts and feelings, uh, thoughts of truth, God's thoughts come from God, and there's life in them. Anybody remember Romans 8 says, to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Does it matter what you think about? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. yes, sir. According to Romans 8, it's a matter of life and death. Yes, sir. What you think about. If, if you look back, every big decision that you made and decision set you on a course and a direction in life, before you made that decision, before you did that, it was a thought. Amen. Right? right? It came to you. And every mistake that you ever made, if you'd have recognized it when the thought first came yeah. and you'd have cast that down and said, no, that's not right and I'm not doing that, you would have never made that mistake. That's right. Amen. But when you think about it and you dwell on it and you ponder it and you imagine it and you fantasize about it, you keep doing that long enough, you'll become obsessed with that and eventually you'll act on it and it can ruin your life. It can destroy your life. So when a thought comes, you know, even the most holy saint of God, child of God, has found coming to their mind thoughts that were impure, that were perverted, that were wrong. And the devil, he's such a sorry cuss, he'll bring you the thoughts and feelings and then accuse you for thinking them. He'll say, look at you. Supposed to be a Christian thinking about that. What's wrong with you? Are you even saved? He's the one that brought it to you. And you got to distinguish that. I know years ago I heard a, a man talking about this. And I thought it was such a good example. He went up on this tall, tall skyscraper and had a little bitty handrail balcony. He's looking down at the cars and people look like ants. And this thought came to him, why don't you just jump? He just turned around and said, you jump, I'm not. <laughs> That is outstanding Amen. because he instantly identified this is something the enemy is bringing to me. There's no reason for me to feel bad about this. This wasn't my thought. Didn't come from the inside of me. Didn't come from God. That's right. Right? Amen. right? And it helped you to respond that way. Something comes yeah. to you like that. You go, no, I'm not crazy. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> no, get out of here. Yeah. Resist the devil yeah. and he will flee from you. Go with me to Ephesians 6, please. Ephesians 6, 10. It said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You ought to say it out loud. I am strong, I am strong in, the Lord. in the Lord. I am strong, I am strong in, the in the power of his might. He said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I think a lot of people thought that said power of the devil. 
It didn't say power. It said wiles. Amplified brings out deceit and trickery. People of God should have zero fear of the devil. None. He is a defeated foe. How many know Jesus put the hurt on him? Did he? Did he? (laughs) When he was raised from the dead, he triumphed over death hell and the grave. He spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly. He said, I got the keys. Huh? But what you should, what you and I should be ever vigilant and on the watch for is his deceptiveness. Him tricking you. And don't think you're untrickable. (laughs) He's been tricking human beings for millennia. He's very crafty. He's not stupid like some people try to say. He's not human. Somebody say, is there there life out there? Oh yeah. Always has been. These, These are beings that have been around a long, long time. Just because you can't see them doesn't mean they're not real. But a lot of times people don't want to hear about that because they say, oh, that makes me scared because they've seen too many Hollywood movies Amen. <laughs> of what supposedly is a, a devil or a demon. You know who inspired most of them? The devil. The devil. And you know who he is? A liar. Amen. <laughs> he's a total liar. Amen. So all the monstrous stuff that he's trying to show you, the truth is, how many know the, Bible, the truth's in the Bible? Yeah. The truth is, he, prevent, he presents himself as an angel of light. That's how he comes. Not as some fire-breathing monster. He, he tries to pass himself off as God or an angel of the Lord. One, two of his favorite things is to convince people he doesn't exist. And so all these thoughts and feelings and stuff that's going on, that's got nothing to do with the devil. That's, the devil don't exist. He goes, that's right, I don't exist. (laughs) But he'll keep pushing you, do it, do it, say this, do this, act on this, do this. He just keep pushing you, pushing you, pushing. Or if you want to be religious, then he'll play that game. And you'll go, the Lord said that you should. Didn't he try to do that with Jesus? It is written, it's in the Bible. He'll give his angels charge over you. So jump off of this pinnacle. Jump. Go on. You believe it, don't you? Jump. Jump. How many know you not only need to know it's written, you need to know what else is written. It is also written and rightly divined the word of truth. That's why you ought to be reading your chapter. You better be reading your chapter every day. You need to come to church. You need to get full of the word of God. So when he tries to spring some of this stuff on you, you go, hey, hey, wait a minute. No. No, I can think of three scriptures right now that just contradicts that all to, all to pieces. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. no, no, I'm not. I'm not accepting that. And you will be hard for him to do anything with. Amen. Come on. Amen. You like that idea? Yeah. Keep reading. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the what? Darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Keep going. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, he keeps saying, stand against, withstand against. What do you do with the devil? You resist him. That's what you do. What did Jesus say? Get behind me, Satan. Right? Get out of here. That's what you do. You're not going to think about the things. You're not going to act on the things. And you tell him, get out of here. Stand having your loins girt about with truth, the belt of truth, and the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. What are fiery darts coming from the devil? They're lies. They're lies accompanied with feelings and suggestions and pressure. They're, they're lies. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Hallelujah. 
A sword is not just a defensive piece. All these other pieces are to protect you, prevent you from being penetrated and pierced with darkness. Amen. But you don't just stop there. You don't just armor up and sit at the house and go, ha, ha, I'm not going to get pierced. <laughs> you are supposed to put on your gospel go boots. Amen. Is that right? Like we talked about. And get your blade. Amen. Amen which is made for offensive action. What's it made for? What is the sword of the Spirit? It's not a physical something. What is it? The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Now what we got into is seeing that the whole world outside of the church is lying under the power of the evil one. 1 John says. 2 Corinthians 4 says the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that don't believe lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. We talked about the, uh, the prodigal son and the Bible said when a certain thing happened he repented he came to himself. Well where was he before that? If he, if, if, he wasn't, if he wasn't at himself, he was in an altered state of mind. He was living in a fantasy world. He thought he could take his money and leave father's house and leave all the things that uh, he had been taught of God and go to Vegas. <laughs> and he could, he could party and be happy. And so he partied and they did everything you ever thought of and some things you shouldn't have thought of and they, they got all the booze and the drugs and, and everything else and, and eventually he ran out of money and when he did that he ran out of friends. Yeah. Yeah. There wasn't really friends. <laughs> huh? Right. And at the same time there was an economic crash in that part of the country. Oh, yeah. Talk about bad timing. <laughs> How many know the enemy will always lead you to the wrong place at the wrong time? That's right. That's right. But God will always lead you to the right place at the right time. Thank you, Lord. But standing out there at the pig trough, how many know that's pretty low for a Jewish boy out feeding pigs? But that's where, how many know sin will bring you low? Rebellion and disobedience will bring you low. And he's looking in the pig trough thinking, you know, that piece of cornbread ain't too bad. Those shucks are not too bad. He's, he's hungry. He's tempted to eat the pig food. And the Bible said he came to himself and he thought, what am I doing? What am I doing out here at the pig trough? My daddy, the people that work for my daddy, they live good. They eat good. That's my daddy. What am I doing out here? I'm going to go home. How many know this, this was a change in his life? This, the whole course of his life is changing right here, right? I'm going to go home. I'm going to tell my father, Father, I, I've sinned against you and against God. I'm no longer worthy to be your son. Just make me like one of your hired. Could you give me a job? At least I know I'll eat good and have a place to stay. Amen. He came to himself. Yes. Now, why am I talking about that? Because multiplied millions of people on this planet, hundreds of millions of people are not living in reality. They are living in an altered state of mind. They're living in darkness. Hundreds of millions. Now this is a thought. What does that mean? You don't just live in Sarasota or Branson or Minnesota, or Los Angeles. You live in your awareness, in your consciousness of what you perceive to be reality. That's where you live. And that's based on what you believe to be true. And the thing is, you are a spirit being with complete, complete freedom of will and choice. And you can believe anything you want to believe. It doesn't have to be true. There are millions 
that are praying 